My dearly beloved in Christ, today on the eighth Sunday after Pentecost, I would like to take as the theme for the gospel, I'm sorry, the theme for the sermon, some words from the epistle rather than from the gospel. Typically on Sunday, we'll look at the gospel and have a sermon that reflects the message of the gospel. But the epistles are also very important and lay down the various truths of our faith. Of course, today's epistle is from the writings of St. Paul, but it really is from the Holy Ghost. Because, of course, the scriptural writers wrote under divine inspiration. So it is the Holy Ghost speaking to us. And in particular, I'd like to reflect upon these words of the epistle. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the flesh, you will live. And is this not indeed the entire explanation encapsulated here in these few words of what the life of a Christian is all about? Working for heaven, striving to save our immortal souls. In fact, that's the entire reason why God created us, why he put us into the world in the catechism the simple Baltimore Catechism, Baltimore number one, and on up through the higher levels. Teach that simple truth. Why did God make me to know him, to love him, to serve him in this world, that I might be happy with him forever in the next? The entire purpose of our existence. And yet how sad, how many people in the world know that? How many people, if you simply walked up on the street or in a store and asked somebody, what's the purpose of life? Why are we here? What's the purpose of our existence? So many people would say, I really don't know. And yet, people think about it. You can read back to the great philosophers who philosophized on why, what's, what's the purpose of human existence. And there are very many different ideas by these brilliant men, sadly, so many of whom were outside the church and therefore misguided in their reasoning process. But yet they thought about that question, as does every human being. Why am I here? What's the purpose of life? And so many try to find happiness where it cannot be found. There are those philosophers called the hedonists. And their idea about life is the purpose of life is to get as much pleasure as you possibly can because you're only here for a certain period of time and then it's all over. And perhaps they do not believe in the immortality of the soul in the future life. So their idea is just get what you can out of life. And is that not the way most people in the world live today? A continuous pursuit of pleasure. And trying to find pleasure in sinful, forbidden areas. And what do they find? A short, temporary, base pleasure. And then a perpetual remorse of conscience. Because God has given us our conscience to guide us in life. And our conscience will rebuke us when we do not do God's holy will. And we all know that. We all know what remorse of conscience is like. Chiding us for not doing what God wants us to do. And so these poor worldlings who are seeking happiness seek it in sinful pleasures and then reap nothing but remorse of conscience, unhappiness. And then what do they do? They try to drown out their conscience. And that's why there is such a problem today with the use of drugs. Because it is an attempt to, at least temporarily, pacify one's conscience or, or cover over 
those promptings of remorse, those accusations from one's conscience. You're not doing what you should. You must change your life. You must amend. Poor souls in the world today. Right here, what St. Paul says, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. You will die in eternity and everlasting death. And in a sense, you die in this life. You die to a life of joy and you live a life of unhappiness, of remorse of conscience, of bitterness, of interior unhappiness. So many souls find that. And yet, what does the world tell them? Well, you need more pleasure. Just try and get whatever you want. But what do we want? Speaking of our fallen human nature, sin. Because of original sin, we have that attraction to evil. And we have to fight against it. Because St. Paul says, if you if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the flesh, then you will live. Live not only for all eternity, but even live a happy life here in this world. You have to put to death, he says, the deeds of the flesh. If you look to the lives of the saints, you will find them always, you'll find them living lives of self-denial, of sacrifice, of penance, overcoming the desires of the flesh. We think about it, why did God make us? Again, to know him, to love him, to serve him in this world. In other words, to do his will. God made us creatures composed of body and soul. And our body is where we find those passions, that inclination to evil. But in the soul, we have reason. And enlightened by God's grace, that reason tells us what we should do and how we should live. But what is God to do with a human being who disobeys him continuously? Who abuses that wonderful gift of reason? Who gives in to all the passions and lives a life of sin? He has no choice but to condemn that soul to hell. Now, Think about this. Think back in the days before we had all of the automation that we have nowadays, and you had all these crafts, and craftsmen would make different things and that would be use, useful for human beings. And let's pick the craft of a watchmaker. So again, before the age of digital timekeeping and all of that, you had watches, clocks. And let's say you had a watchmaker, clockmaker, who spends hours and hours making a clock with all the little gears, etc. And then it's all done and he turns it on or winds it up and nothing happens. It doesn't keep time. So he goes back and goes through every step of the process. Maybe changes a little gear that he thinks is not functioning properly and it still won't keep time. What do you think this clockmaker is going to do eventually? He's going to throw it away because it's not fulfilling the purpose for which he made it. So what is God to do with us, with human beings who don't fulfill the purpose for which he made them? He has no choice but to cast them aside, to send them out from his presence because they have not fulfilled the purpose for which he made them. So you see, it's only logical when we compare it to a craftsman who makes something and it doesn't fulfill its purpose. He's not going to retain it. It's no, it's no good to him. A couple days ago, we had the anniversary of the third apparition at Fatima on July the 13th. Now, many people, when you read the story of Our Lady of Fatima, many will concentrate on the first apparition, because it was the first one, and the words of Our Lady, and especially on the last one, on October the 13th, because that's when the great miracle of the sun took place. But to my mind, the most significant of the six apparitions of Our Lady to the children at Fatima was on July the 13th, 
because that is when Our Lady showed the children a vision of the fires of hell. She showed them a vision of the fires of hell and they were terrified. Lucia later said, we would have died of fright had Our Lady not been there. And in fact, they did not reveal for many years later, well after the deaths of Francisco and Jacinta, did Lucia make known that on the occasion of the third apparition, they had this vision. And they said they saw the demons there under the appearance of frightful animals. And they saw the souls of the damned being tossed about by the flames. And Our Lady said, here you see hell, where the souls of poor sinners go. So many souls go to hell because there is no one to pray and make sacrifices for them. But this vision reminds us of the reality of hell and how we must do all we can by putting to death the deeds of the flesh to do all we can to avoid that terrible reality of souls falling to hell, to avoid it for ourselves. Now, how many souls go to hell? Of course, we don't know the answer to that question, but what we do know from the writings of the saints is that many, many souls go to hell. Every single day, how many persons die in the world every day? Thousands. I don't know the number. Tens of thousands. Maybe even a hundred thousand. Many souls die every single day. How many of those go to heaven? How many of those go to purgatory? And how many of those go to hell? And the souls that are lost to hell will be there forever. There is no opportunity to come back to life and to do it over. And we know that many souls go to hell from the words of our Lord himself. He must have been preaching in such a way as to convey the idea that few are saved. Because after he was done preaching one day, the apostles asked him, Lord, are few saved? And he didn't answer the question directly. But what he said was, strive to enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the path that leads to destruction, and many there are who enter that way. How narrow is the gate and straight the way that leads to life, and few there are who find it. That's how our Lord answered that question, are few saved? So he gave the apostles to understand that, yes, few are saved. And it is not because these souls are not given the graces they need to save their souls, but it is because they choose to reject those graces. They choose sin over the will of God. We must be so careful because we live in an age when the devil has been so successful at spreading, multiplying the occasions of sin. When one thinks of those who are responsible for the entertainment industry, television programs, movies, music, all of the forms of entertainment, and now with the internet, pornography, those who peddle all of this smut, one can only think of the words of our Lord regarding scandal. Woe to him through whom scandal comes. But there is so much of that out there in the world but it is not an excuse because God's grace is there for us to avoid occasions of sin, to live lives of prayer, penance, and modesty, and reception of the sacraments. We have all the graces we need to live lives of sanctifying grace, to form good habits, virtuous habits, and to stay away from danger, from the occasion of sin. So often a person will fall into sin because of curiosity, approaching the danger. We must flee these dangers and fortify ourselves, strengthen ourselves with a good spiritual life to be strong against 
the occasions of sin. I want to go back briefly to what I said earlier about penance. You see that in the lives of the saints. You know, it's, it's interesting that we live at a time when the learned people think this is the best time there's ever been in the world because of the advances of science and technology and the accumulation of human inventions and endeavors and so forth. And yet, I just finished reading a book about monasticism in Europe in the early centuries after the fall of the Roman Empire. In particular, it was about the seventh century. And it is amazing, it told the life of one saint who traveled around Europe founding different monasteries, and there were thousands of men, because monasteries were primarily for men, thousands of them who left the world and retired into monasteries because they just wanted to pursue the salvation of their immortal souls. And yet nowadays, especially after Vatican II, consecrated souls, priests, nuns, brothers, left the religious life. So which age is better then? Back then, when the barbarian hordes swept across Europe and society was in what is often called the Dark Ages, and yet there were so many souls who left the world, who left everything to give their lives to God because they wanted to secure the salvation of their immortal souls. They took the words of our Lord to heart. What does it profit a man if he gain the whole world but suffer the loss of his soul? And when the children saw that vision of hell, Our Lady told them to sacrifice for the conversion of sinners. So you see, by penance, by sacrifice, we not only strengthen our own soul against temptation, but we also earn graces for the conversion of sinners. So let us reflect upon these things, upon the words of St. Paul in today's epistle, the words of the Holy Ghost, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the flesh, you will live. That's the choice that we have. And how many are those who make the wrong choice because they're looking for happiness and they pursue every forbidden pleasure and they're left with misery, with unhappiness. Look at the suicide rate nowadays. Why? Because there's so much misery. And there is the misery because of human beings choosing sin, thinking that they'll find happiness. And they find only remorse of conscience and unhappiness and misery. And finally, we have our Lord in today's gospel rebuking us, saying, the children of this world are more prudent in relation to their own generation than are the children of the light. We are the children of the light. We know the truth. We know why God created us. Most people don't know the answer, but we know. Are we pursuing the salvation of our soul? Because that's the only thing worth working for, ultimately. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.